In the small town of Terrell, Oklahoma, life is simple and close-knit. But on the night of September 3rd, 2023, this community was shaken by a tragedy that no one saw coming. Noah Presgrove, a 19-year-old full of life and dreams, attended a party at a friend's house. What started as a typical night of celebration soon took a dark turn. Every single day I think about him. A long time for Noah Presgrove's aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, and grandparents to reflect on the 19-year-old's short life. Not a time when you saw that boy did he not give you a hug tell you how much he loved you. He was goofy. He was hilarious. Fearless. <laughs> Very fearless. fearless. I've taught him life and about just about having fun in life, you know, and he's just always been there with us. It's been a long time to early in the night tensions flared between Noah and Jack Newton. A heated argument broke out leading to pushing and slapping. It was the first sign of trouble. Okay, something big is going on here. First of all, the stories are changing. Second of all, you know, I'm hearing different stories from my family members that were out there. Like there was there was more than just one argument too. There was multiple arguments throughout that night. It The party started getting a little bit aggressive. So wait a minute, just back up. When you mean arguments, your arguments Noah with someone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There were there were several arguments, and 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 Jack and uh, Noah. You know, uh, some of my nephews saw they they got into a really heated argument. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I inboxed Jack about it. You know, because like I said, we're we're really close as the wrestling family. So, and he he's like, no, it wasn't that big of an argument. You know, we we kind of hugged and made up, and but then hearing different stories that I heard, um, it, it was a very very aggressive. You know, even to some touching each other and pushing and stuff like that and a little bit more but i'm not going to elaborate on that right now but it was it was aggressive it was very aggressive so like i said after that i was like okay there's obviously a lot more here and then and this is saturday night correct still we're still on saturday night mm -hmm. no this this is sunday this is sunday okay i just want to keep track of uh my cousin shows up and uh, I stopped drinking. Uh, I took a I took a picture of her uh, on the on the on the porch, and a lot of people have seen. And I took a, a a bunch of videos that you can see from the party. I took those, uh, like me sitting in the corner with my pink knee brace on, uh, videoing, and you can see Noah walk around in his black shorts and uh shirtless as usual and uh if you can look at it i was zooming on a girl uh, that's my cousin i was uh showing my mom at the time uh, that she was okay because she was worrying about her and georgia's mom didn't know that she was there so um and uh, i fell asleep after that about what time about what time was it when you remember about falling asleep on that Sunday night it was around two like close to two two in the morning yeah two in the morning and, and before before you went to sleep though Noah was still awake walking around oh, yeah Noah was still awake walking around and who else was there was Jack there too Jack uh I mean it was mainly just the the people that went to the the breakfast the day before Plus, Mikey. Mikey uh, came there that day. But was and Jack awake at two? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, I woke up around uh, 2, 2.43. And uh, my mom called me uh, saying that she had picked up my cousin because uh, they were worried about her. And they picked her up about a a mile or so down the road because they noticed her location was moving and uh told her to pull over she was in the car with her friend and they picked her up and called me and i went right back to sleep after that when you woke up for that phone call was there anybody in the room anybody in the house oh uh, yes ma'am they were they were playing beer pong in the the kitchen 
Who? Well, not the kitchen, uh, the dining room, the dining room or whatever. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I seen Noah, Jack, Jasmine, and a couple other people. I don't remember, but um, whenever whenever I originally fell asleep, there was um. So I'll 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 like do the hand motions to like explain it. So when you walk into the house, the living room's on the right. And there's a couch right here, and then there's another couch, and then there's a recliner in the corner that you can see where I'm videoing from. And uh, I sleep on the couch closest to the door. And whenever I went to bed, um, Brylin was on the couch beside me, and then Mikey was laying in the floor, and Isaac was in the chair, the recliner. But um, whenever uh, whenever Jack burst through the door in the morning, uh, brow and sweat and, uh, Isaac, not Isaac, Mikey, they swapped places. So I don't know if there's some activity going on before then around that time, but, um, they, so Mikey was on the couch at that time, whenever Jack burst through the door and Brylin was on the ground. Right. And all right, let me back up a little bit. So at two forty one when you first woke 243. up. Two forty three. Two forty three when you first woke up after you fell asleep around two o'clock. So you're you probably just napping for like forty five minutes, you're out. When you mm -hmm. woke up, you saw Noah and uh was it and a couple other people playing uh beer pong? Yes, sir. Okay, and then did you go back but, to sleep after that? Yeah, I remember back to sleep. Wait, but when you woke up at two forty three, Jack was playing beer pong with Noah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And Jasmine was there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And there's a couple others I don't really remember. Was Avery there as well? Uh I know she was at the house. I don't know if she was in there. Got it. But you you, you didn't see her right then and there. Okay, no, so sir. then you after you noticed that, you just kinda like drift back off to sleep? Yeah, I was I was tired, you can say. But when you woke up at two forty three, so Isaac was on the couch? No, Isaac was in the recliner. Okay. So 243, Isaac's in the recliner, Mikey's on the couch. Mikey's on the ground, and Brylin's on the couch. Got it. Okay. So let's do it again. 243, Mikey's on the... Tell me where everybody was at 243 when you woke up. All right, so uh, Isaac's in the recliner, I'm on the couch, Brylin's on the couch, and Mikey's on the ground. Got it. Okay. All right, so then you see them playing beer pong, then you just kind of go back and you drift off into dreamland again. Right. But before we get to Jack bursting in the door, let's just say at what happened at 2.43 was when you went back to sleep, who else was going laying around you? Um, so there was Isaac in the, the recliner in the corner and um, other couch and Brylin was on it and I was there's two couches and there was a recliner I was on one couch Brylin was on the other couch and Isaac was in the recliner and uh Mikey was laying on the floor okay so right. all those guys were laying around and you you were laying around as well at 243 meanwhile Jack Noah Jasmine and some other people were playing beer pong is that correct yes ma'am okay so then after you went back to sleep what was the next thing that happened? Um, Jack comes bursting through the door at 5.15. And the time that I know it was 5.15 was because uh, I felt like I just were, I just went back to like I just fell asleep. So I checked my phone and it was 5.15. And um, he, he yells that Noah is dead. Noah is dead, guys. And uh, I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean Noah is dead? And he's, he said he's dead. And then he just uh, took off to his truck and left. And I, I start waking up all the all the guys and tell them that we got to go because Jack says no is dead. And we all wake up and get dressed. And uh, as I'm trying to find my shoes, I noticed that one of my hey dudes were missing. And um, come to find out later, Noah had it on. 
Caden and the others rushed to the scene. There they found Noah's lifeless body. The shock and disbelief were palpable. The second caller, also named Tyler, provided more details. He said he was driving to work when he saw a naked body laying on the white line in the middle of the road. He had almost hit it, thinking it was a deer, but then realized it was a per- 911, what is your emergency? Yes, ma'am, I was driving to work. I'm south of Terrell, or north of Terrell, south of Ryan. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there's somebody laying dead along the road. They look naked. I'm staying back. Okay, I but. just um, had uh, two calls on that, and um, I have a deputy headed that way. All right, well, I'm Can sitting you? here blocking the road. Oh, are you there waiting? Okay. Because he's what, right, the body's laying right on the white line. Oh, that, it is a boy. He's naked, and he's went laying on the white line. He's naked. I, I turned around because I just about hit it because I was there's a deer run across the road, and I'm like, first I thought it was a deer, and I was talking to a guy who worked with him. I'm like, I don't think that's a deer. Yeah, that's and, what that my first caller said, thought it was a deer, and then when he looked back and he said, no, there's no way that's a deer. <laughs> No, no, and it, it actually looks like there's a piece of clothing maybe laying in the middle of the road now. I'm about, I don't want to get too close, I just... Don't want Jeremy right now. No, this is don't. another 911 call that's looking at, looking at it. Oh, she's already been in touch with Jeremy. Okay, yeah, Jeremy's going to head that way. Jeremy's heading that way, she's going to go. Okay, right. okay um, so you're staying there, or... Yeah, I'll, I'll just go ahead and make sure nobody runs it over or anything okay. else. I mean, I have a patron, uh, art reporting party staying there until a deputy gets there to okay. block so nobody hits them again. There is a uh, reporting party that's going to sit there with flashers on until. Okay, I appreciate it. Can I get your name and. Uh... Ah, you well, you're going yeah, to be there. Name's... Okay. Yeah, my name. Okay, are you the one I just talked to? No. Oh, okay, because I had another Tyler call me, too. Okay. Oh. <laughs> what is your no, phone number? It's, it's uh, the, well, let me remember my work. Uh, 580. I'm on my work phone, but I don't ever remember that number. That's my personal phone number I just gave you. Okay, no, that's fine. Just from my logs of all the 911 calls I'm getting on it. But uh, I do have the sheriff headed there and an undersheriff headed there, too. <laughs> all right. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. I have asked this question before, but here goes. Was Noah Presgrove murdered in Oklahoma, or did somebody kill him accidentally and run away? Or was it an accident, period? Random, tragic, nobody's fault. It pains me to say it, but even eight months later, it depends on who you talk to. Noah, as you will probably know, is this 19-year-old high school grad whose battered body turned up on the side of a highway Labor Day morning last year, naked except for his shoes, one of which was not his. From the outset, the police called it suspicious, which wasn't much of a stretch, but then they went radio silent. The family never even got a proper death certificate. But two days ago, bombshell. Noah's brother told us exclusively the police said to the family they were looking at several people as possible suspects in Noah's death. Implication, foul play. That same day, News Nation paid a visit to the Oklahoma City Medical Examiner's Office, asking why, after all this time, why they had failed to produce an autopsy report. And then voila, there's Alex Capriola. Just yesterday, they produced an autopsy report, listing Noah's cause of death as multiple blunt force injuries, perhaps from, are you ready? Unknown vehicle, implication pedestrian accident. But then under manner of death, which is accident, homicide, suicide, natural, the ME marked unknown. So we ran all of that by Joseph Scott Morgan, who's our go-to certified death investigator and forensic analyst. And he pointed out something really interesting, that the assessment of the body was not done at the scene, and that the autopsy was done more than 24 hours after Noah was found, which is far from ideal. And now today comes a written statement from the Oklahoma Highway Patrol. And again, bombshell. They're investigating Noah's death along with the OSBI, the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, and play, pay close attention to the operative line in the new statement. It reads, and I quote, currently the OHP is not investigating Pressgrove's death as a murder, end quote. Which could be in line with the autopsy report. What about the family's report that police were looking at possible suspects? Do the police believe that Noah was a victim of homicide, death at the hands of another, but that it wasn't on purpose? 
And if so, they may want to have another chat with the ME. Or are the two investigating agencies not on the same page? The autopsy revealed the extent of Noah's injuries, painting a grim picture of the force and trauma he experienced. I am joined now by Dr. Michelle Dupree, a medical examiner and forensic pathologist. She oversaw the second autopsy of Stephen Smith, that South Carolina teenager and former acquaintance of Buster Murdoch, whose mysterious death has a lot of similarities to Noah. Doctor, thank you for being on. I think the first question is, what do you make of the report? I can read it as a layperson. I think you see a lot more to it. Um, what's your take? Ashley, I'm so glad y'all are looking into this because this is not tracking as a motor vehicle accident. I am very strongly suspicious that there was some sort of an assault or something before he was actually found in the road and perhaps even placed in the road to make it look like a traffic accident. What are the things in, in particular, the evidence that, that make you think this is not a vehicle pedestrian accident as the autopsy lists? But there's so many. One, um, he has no long bone fractures. There are no fractures of his legs or his arms. He has injuries on both sides of his body. Um, there was no, apparently no debris found at the scene. Um, he also has rib fractures um, in, in his back. Typically when we find fractures of the ribs, their front or their side, um, but from the back means that he was hit by something from the back. But yet he also has injuries on the front of his head. His skull has significant and numerous skull fractures. This does not track to be a, a pedestrian motor vehicle accident in my mind. Also, his shoes were on. Every one of those accidents I've seen, one of the first things you notice is that people literally are, are out of their shoes. Stephen Smith seemed to have his shoes on as well, right? That's true. And a lot of times that is correct. The person is knocked out of their shoes, but it doesn't always happen. And in Stephen Smith's case, I don't believe that he was hit by the vehicle itself, but by something on the vehicle. And that's why his shoes were still left on. Let me ask you this. Um, our friend Joseph Scott Morgan, who's a certified death investigator from Jacksonville State University, he said that the autopsy wasn't done for 24 hours after um, Noah died and that the medical examiner was not out at the scene. I thought that was unusual given that, little I know of your profession, um, a medical examiner's report takes in a lot of stuff that's not medical. It takes in the scene, the clues, the actual investigative um, you know, hints that are all around the way the body is out there. How strange is this? Well, it actually depends on the jurisdiction. In some jurisdictions, medical examiners do go out to the scene. In others, they don't, and they have death investigators that'll go out to the scene. But we absolutely need that police report to get the totality of what happened to this young man. Um, I haven't seen a police report. I don't know what it says, but we have to have that information, not just looking at pieces of it. Michelle Dupree, uh, Dr. Dupree, thank you so much for your wisdom. Um, I'm going to call on you again because I know you know what you're talking about and I'm appreciative of your time. Thank you. Thank you. I want to end this um, by saying something important from the family. Noah's family wants everyone who's been following this case to know something that's very important to them. Noah did not have drugs in his system when he died. If you don't believe me, you can view that part of his autopsy online. We have it at newsnationnow.com. You can also download our app and you'll get all the information uh, from the past as well. But very important to the family because they said a lot of rumors are out there. Noah did not have drugs in his system in that autopsy. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. Noah Presgrove's life was tragically cut short. The events of that night remain a painful mystery. This documentary is a tribute to his memory and a quest for the truth.